I'm on my way to my father. But I will return. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I bear witness that Allah came in the person of Master Fard Muhammad, and that he raised the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and has placed him on the throne of power over creation. And I further bear witness that the Honorable Louis Farrakhan is his Christ, the Lamb of God through whom Allah is establishing his eternal kingdom. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Kareem Allah and thank you for taking time to view this very important message. We continue with our series on the Messianic prophecies. Our aim is to bring clarity to the Honorable Louis Farrakhan's current function as the Messiah, but more importantly, his imminent function as the Christ. In the Holy Quran, it states, and mention Mary in the book when she drew aside from her family to an eastern place. So she screened herself from them. Then we sent to her our spirit, and it appeared to her as a well-made man. She said, I flee for refuge from thee to the beneficent. If thou art one guardian against evil, he said, I am only bearer of a message of thy Lord that I will give thee a pure boy. Again, this comes from the Holy Quran. Regarding verse 17, several other English translations of the Holy Quran use angel instead of spirit and perfect man instead of well-made man. In any case, we derive from this verse that the mind of Allah dwells in the man sent to give Mary a pure boy. Of course, he did not bring this pure boy with him and with his luggage. Mary gave physical birth to Jesus. Therefore, this verse refers to the intimacy between Mary and the man sent by Allah, which produced this pure boy. Again, in the Holy Quran, it states, and of his signs is this, that he created mates for you from among, or excuse me, from yourselves, that you might find quiet of mind in them. And he put between you love and compassion. Surely there are signs in this for a people who reflect. How can this child be other than pure since it is produced through a devout woman and a man in whom the indwelling spirit of Allah resides? Specifically, these verses relate to, to the domestic life in the making of Master Fard Muhammad, the supreme being of the universe. Generally, these verses relate to the science of how each of us were made. What do we mean by make or made? The generic definition of make means to bring something into existence by shaping or changing its material. For example, combining parts. The obvious parts used to make any human being are sperm, and ovum. It states in the Holy Quran, surely we have created man from sperm mixed with ovum. The fact that Allah identifies man as being alive when he or she is a mixture of sperm and ovum means that a new person is alive at the point of conception. However, life is manifested before the sperm and ovum fused together to create this new life. How so? Well, sperm and ovum contain intelligence. They are alive. This is why in the Holy Quran, they are called life germs. 
The actions of sperm and ovum during the conception of life show they function independently of our conscious minds. This is to say that none of us can nor are we in a position to tell the sperm or ovum what to do. They do what they are created to do. Therefore, we can go as far as saying that your sperm as a man is a little you and your ovum as a woman is a little you. So since the sperm and ovum are who we are, then who are you? I mean you specifically. What is the quality of your state of mind and physical health? What is the state of your morality and integrity? Do you have integrity? These questions point to the quality of the genes in the ovum and sperm. Now, why is this subject important? Again, in the Holy Quran, it states, it is he, originator, who has created man from water. Then he has established relationships of lineage and marriage. For thy Lord has power over all things. So the quality of our lineage or offspring, which spreads through marriage, is affected by who we are. So would you want to see another you on earth or do you want to see a better you on earth? This is a big question to consider when we bring children into this world, knowing that they're directly from us. What is your quality it will be reflected in the quality of your offspring. Just keep that in mind. So what is a gene? Gene is derived from the Greek word genesis, meaning birth or origin. Genes comprise DNA, which is the unique blueprint that each person has. The genetic material guides the development of the body, and it also contains genetic attributes known as heredity. These attributes include, but are not limited to, physical traits, talents, affinities to particular interests, mental and physical predispositions. These attributes are consolidated from the parent's life germs and formed in the new life or child. So most, if not all of us, can recognize strong resemblances in, in looks and also behaviors between parents and their children. You know how we say, you just like your father, same mannerisms. You look like him too, right? Well, this high scientific knowledge is associated with the hidden wisdom of how powerful human beings such as the holy wise scientists are produced. We talked about the 24 major, the 24 scientists. There are 12 major and 12 minor who write the original people's history every 25,000 years. These scientists are among the we mentioned in the Holy Quran. Now, Mother Tainetta Muhammad states on this point. This knowledge of the reality of God has been kept a secret for all these ages of men, of man on our planet until the coming of the great Mahdi, Master Fad Muhammad, who was identified by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as God in person. This person is the vessel that contains the reality of God's spirit, which is passed down through a divine circle of scientists who are all sons of men from the beginning. And thus is derived the term son of man. Now the Bible also attests to this reality. It states, I have said, Ye are all gods and are all and all of you are children of the most high. Some say the most high God. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princesses. Elsewhere in the Bible, it states, for the Lord is a great God 
in a great king above all gods. Now, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad once declared very boldly, when you look, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you're looking at God. He also said, when you look at the black man, you're looking at God. There's no such thing of God being an ethereal spirit floating in space. And we don't see these ethereal spirits running governments, planning war and messing up the whole earth. We see human beings doing this and it doesn't seem that anyone can stop that from happening except another human being. And this is what Christ is all about, who is a human being. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us aspects of Master Far Muhammad's history, including some knowledge about his parents. He states, the great Mahdi, the God and judge who is now present in the world, Master Far Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever, taught me that his father was a real black man. His father went up into the mountains, the governments of the Caucasians picking out a white woman to marry so that he could give birth to a son looking white, yet the father is black. In providing more details about Master Far Muhammad's parents, Mother Tainetta Muhammad, again, who is the wife, was the wife of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, states, we are taught by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad that this genealogy of both parents combined produced the special characteristics in preparation for his master father Muhammad coming and finding his father's lost people in America. His father's name is Alfonso and he is a black man from the original nation. His mother was chosen from among the Caucasian or white race living in the Caucasus mountains of Russia. Her name is Babaji, BBG, or perhaps spelled as Babaji, which we pronounce as Babyji. Master Far Muhammad's father was the supreme being and hence produced a son to take his place. The mothering that Master Far Muhammad received from his mother was vital to his overall development into the supreme being. The mothering began while he was in the womb of his mother. This is where all mothering of new life begins. The book of Ezekiel describes the mission of the coming of Master Far Muhammad to redeem his lost people who have been and continue to be held in bondage in the Americas. It states, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more. For I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. And I will make them in, in the places round about my hill of blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessings or of blessing. Now, there's much to these verses. But essentially, God is going to take his chosen people and those who have held them will not be able to maintain themselves. And we see this unfolding right before our eyes. Now, the scriptures tell us that Master Father Muhammad will bring his people into the state of righteousness and perfection that reflects his state of perfection. Now, how does Master Father Muhammad go about accomplishing this? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad states, He goes, meaning Master Father Muhammad, after the root of all things like our black father did in the beginning, 
when he built the universe out of nothing. He is as one sitting out in space with no material of space to make something altogether new. He goes after the root and making this new world of people. As he said, first, he makes a new mind for us and a new way of thinking. He teaches us a different education, one that we have never had before. He gives us education on the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of gods, not of prophets, but of the gods of the prophets of the past. He builds our minds according to the way God thinks or gods think. Well, why should we not consider the prospect of this great blessing, especially since no one else? has explained the fulfillment of this prophecy more directly than the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Of all the religions in the world that proselytize about God and Christ, only through the nation of Islam do we witness the extraordinary confidence to place names of persons on these functions. Nowhere else. So unless you can give a name to me about your God specifically and your Christ specifically, then you're speaking in the air and air don't redeem nobody. In the previous message, we declared that racism is a manifestation of Yaku's idea of devil. In the supreme wisdom, Master Fraud Muhammad asked, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, this question in the Supreme Wisdom. Tell us what and how the devil is made. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's full answer to this question is the devil is made from the original people by grafting, by separating the germs. In the black man, there exists two germs, one a black germ and one a brown germ. Yaku, with his law on birth control, separated the brown germ from the black man and grafted it into a white by destroying the black germ. After following this process for 600 years, the germ became white and weak and was no more original. Also, by thinning the original blood, it became weak and wicked and is no more the same. Thus, this is the way Yaqub made the devil. Well, generally grafting is a form of breeding. We are further taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that 59,999 59, original people followed Yaqub and that these followers were the raw material he used to bring out the races the brown, the yellow, and the white, through this grafting process which took, which took place on the island of Patmos after he and his followers were exiled from Arabia. And you can find all of this in Message to the Black Man in America, which was first printed, I believe, in 1965. So we've had it in our possession for a long time. Now here we must note that Yaqub was focused on the sperm more than the ovum. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad further states, there was no good taught to them while on the island. No good. By teaching the nurses to kill the black baby and save the brown baby so as to graft the white out of it, by lying to the black mother of the baby, this lie was born into the very nature of the white baby and murder for the black people was also born in them or made by nature a liar and murderer. Now, the most penetrating question is, has this wicked nature been manifested in the Caucasian people's behavior 
since the time of their making on the island of Patmos? Well, the answer to that question is a resounding yes. Everyone, including the Caucasian people, know this. The history of the Caucasian people as liars and murderers speaks for itself, especially in their horrific invasion of the Americas and Africa. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad further states in this book, in 1898, a devil by the name of Le Croix, representing Belgium's big business, admitted he had murdered 160 million, 160 million so-called Negro men, women, and children. He also admitted he had tortured some and crucified women and children. Now you can research this for yourself. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad continues or also states, these people, the Caucasian people, have been the worst people to us, the black nation, since they have been on the face of the earth. They were created and made for just the purpose of destroying our peace as well as our lives. They have destroyed six hundred million of the black nation since they have been on our planet. This averages 100 million every thousand years of their rule. Now, no doubt, their assault on the original people continues at this very moment. Well, consider this from the Center for American Progress which is an independent, which is an independent nonpartisan policy institution or institute. Infant mortality and mass incarceration are major issues affecting the black community. But while they are often thought of and dealt with on separate tracks, structural racism firmly connects these critical issues, structural racism, exposes black women to distinct stressors, such as contact with the criminal justice system that ultimately undermine their health and the health of their children. Today, infants born to black mothers die at twice the rate as those born to white mothers. This horrific disparity cannot be fully explained by differences in income and in income education, or even health care. Evidence suggests that cumulative stress from generations of structural racism is driving this epidemic. Well, the best way to understand this term structural racism is to equate it with the work of the synagogue of Satan in upholding Yaqub's mission to rule over the original people through deceit and murder. In the previous message, we stated that Yakub required the Caucasian man to mix with the original people and that such mixing predisposed the original people to the genetic nature of the Caucasian man. Let us go further into this. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad states, in the days of Yaqub's grafting of the present white race, a new and unlike race among the black nation for 600 years, his law was that they should not allow the birth of a black baby in their family. But the white, the devil, should mix their blood with the black nation in order to help destroy black, but they should not allow the black to mix with their blood. His aim was to kill and destroy the black nation. It is the sperm or male sperm, well, of course, that determines whose blood is mixed with whom. 
Why did Yaku require the Caucasian or white man to mix his blood with the original black woman? Caucasian sperm lessens the strength of the original nation because it is a weak and wicked sperm. How so? The Caucasian sperm contains the genetic propensities, meaning an innate drive towards immorality developed through the grafting process. The propensities to lie, steal, murder, and a general weakness to readily succumb to the low desires of the flesh, which includes envy, jealousy, selfishness, arrogance, and as we are witnessing at a just shocking manifestation, self-righteousness. This sheds significant light on the reason why military invasions and conquests by Caucasian soldiers always included the massive rape of the indigenous women. Rape in this sense was an essential weapon in the global rule of the Caucasian people. I hope you're listening. The aim of such ghastly atrocities was and is to produce offspring that is closer to the genetic nature of the conquerors. This compromises the future of the indigenous people, the original people, by making offspring that is prone to wholeheartedly accept the immoral doctrines of the Caucasian conquerors. Again, Yakub also required that the Caucasian man keep the original black man from mixing with the Caucasian woman for several reasons. Well, before I get to the reasons, we know this is a reality because once upon a time they had a reckless eyeball law which if you as a black man even looked in the way of the Caucasian woman, you could be beaten or killed. Here's the reasons why Yakub required the Caucasian man to keep the black man at bay from the Caucasian woman. First, by ensuring that the Caucasian woman only made it with the Caucasian man. Ideally, guaranteed that the genetic dis predispositions to deceive, assault, and murder the original people persisted through the generations of the Caucasian people, especially the Caucasian people of the Western Hemisphere. In other words, we can continue to manufacture those who are innately hateful of the original people. So this makes racism even structural racism, a genetic predisposition to attitudes of hatred towards the original people. This is why we are still confronting racism, not generations, but 6,000 years since they were made on the island of Patmos. Second, Yakub did not want the Caucasian people to introduce a black baby into the Caucasian race because the opposite would occur. That is the essence of the original black man's genetic nature would proliferate the Caucasian race. Again, this does not imply that the ovum does not have a consequential role on the genetic quality of the offspring. It certainly does, especially as it pertains to the quality of the mind and heart of the woman and serving as a firm resting place to nurture the new life. The woman's love for Allah, God, and the man, combined with the care and love she attends to herself, is essential in nurturing the new life in her womb. Now, this is among the reasons why Master Far Muhammad's father did not need an original black woman to produce Master Far Muhammad. Again, Master Far Muhammad's mother was of the Caucasian race, yet her womb produced this magnificent human being 
the most powerful human being who has ever lived and who ever will live. Think over that fact. A Caucasian person in his in her or her right mind would take honor in this reality. But most of you are not in your right mind, but that's what we're trying to help you do. Well, does this mean that any Caucasian woman has the potential to produce powerful, godlike human beings? Emphatically, yes. However, this potential is compromised by the quality of her heart and by the quality of the man's sperm. A racist minded heart in or sperm will continue to bring forth devils from the wombs. That is of any woman, including the original black man, excuse me, woman. The horrific state of the world is proof of this. So what intelligent woman wants to go down in history as bringing forth devils from her womb? especially in this time, in the presence of Allah, wherein he is ridding the earth of devils forever. In the Bible, the coming of Master Far Muhammad is, is explained through these words. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that the flesh is sinful, as some preachers think. These verses refer to the genetic propensity of the Caucasian people to rebel against the law of God. This verse also refers to Master Father Muhammad's father making a son that looks like he is Caucasian, but is not. This is what the phrase likeness of sinful flesh means. Master Far Muhammad again is a black man. He came to condemn and rid the earth of the mind of Yaqub. In the Bible it states, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Now, these verses relate to the missions of Yaqub and Master Far Muhammad, respectively. Yaqub's idea of devil manifested through the Caucasian people brought condemnation to humanity. How so? Well, sin is condemnation because it is against the will of Allah. So in a world where, where sin is acceptable, even treasured. Humanity is condemned by the law of God. Now, since Master Far Muhammad is made of both people, black and white, he is best suited and poised to give justice to both. This bears on the reality of God in the domestic life of the Messiah, the Christ, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. Now, although Master Far Muhammad naturally inherits the awesome divinity and universal governance. According to the will of the originator, he's mortal. I think we've made that point clear. No doubt he has emotions and feelings as all human beings do. This reality is clearly stated throughout the scriptures in that God is described as hearing, seeing, and speaking and as being glad and angry. 
referring to a human being, the supreme being among human beings. Allah, however, is not consumed by his emotions as most people are. Most of us allow our emotions to drive our decisions and actions. When we do this, the results are often disastrous. The supreme being, on the other hand, uses the highest intelligence when making decisions and when performing and directing actions. His decisions affects, affect the lives of people eons into the future. Therefore, he ensures that his decisions are perfect, meaning mathematical and not emotional. As the supreme being, Master Far Muhammad naturally has the greatest stake in bringing humanity out of darkness into his wondrous light. By having a black father and a Caucasian mother, Master Far Muhammad has the unlimited capacity to give mercy and justice to all of humanity, which is which, of course, includes his mother's people the Caucasian people. Now, considering the Caucasian people's vast and unparalleled evil throughout the earth, why has Allah even made his mercy available to them? Through the divine warning and wisdom taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. In particular, of course, all the prophets came to the Caucasian people, so they've always had the benefit of God's mercy. Well, many original people may hate the mere notion of this. Many may desire all Caucasian people to be destroyed. Well, such people are not the supreme being. Humanity as a whole has fallen far below Allah's will and expectation for life. Therefore, everyone on earth is in dire need of Allah's mercy. How so? Well, even as I speak, races and ethnic groups among the original people have wicked practices associated with their histories and cultures, especially as it relates to the abuse of women and children. They have succumbed to the influences of the satanic mind within themselves. Allah's anger, therefore, is kindled against the entire world. The presence of the Caucasian people on earth is not their fault. They were the means of achieving a specific objective, which was and is the perfection of the original man. Hence, the evil poured onto the earth by the Caucasian people was the result of the active will of Allah. Moreover, and as we already said, the Caucasian people's origin is in the 59,999 original people who, that followed Yaqub. We have to keep that point in mind. Yaqub's idea of devil was planted in the mind of his followers before they were exiled to the island of Patmos. So the idea of devil did not originate in the grafting process. It originated in the mind of his followers. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, well, it originated in his mind, but was implanted in the mind of his followers before they got to the island of Patmos. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad states, as Mr. Yaqub continued to preach for converts, he told his people that he would make the others work for them. This promise came to pass. Naturally, there are always some people around who would like to have others do their work. Those are the ones who fell for Mr. Yaqub's teaching 100 percent. As he made converts in and around the holy city of Mecca, Persecutions set in. The authorities became afraid of such powerful teachings with promises of luxury and making slaves of others. A 
Again, at that time, no other races existed. Everyone was black. Therefore, the Caucasian people are given the same divine grace and mercy afforded any human being. Allah would be unjust not to offer this opportunity of salvation to them. To them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Divine justice and redemption comes through the Lamb of God, the Christ, who is the ruler of the earth. Again, we repeat from the Bible, for if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. So this relates to the domestic life of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, who is this Christ. As such, Master Fard Muhammad required him to have a vested interest in giving justice to both people, black and Caucasian, just as he, meaning Master Fard Muhammad, has a vested interest, a black father, and a Caucasian mother. This is very serious. Vested interest means having a personal stake or involvement in an undertaking or state of affairs. So Master Far Muhammad required, even commanded the Honorable Louis Farrakhan to bring the Caucasian people directly into his life by taking a Caucasian woman as a wife. Allah willing, we intend to go further into this in the next message. However, suffice it to say, if you do not understand the Honorable Louis Farrakhan's relationship to Master Far Muhammad, in other words, you just want to see him in his speaking of truth in his economic program, but I won't take Master Far Muhammad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, in the teachings of the Amblage Muhammad. Well, then you won't understand him. It's just simply that clear. And you don't understand him if you think that way. So this is why over the last few messages, we have been going into key aspects involving Master Far Muhammad's history, presence, and aim for humanity, because you have to know who is the shot caller in colloquial sense of not just America, but the entire universe. Of course, he's given that power over to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now, I just want to say this. For five years now, I've been teaching on the presence, the identity, and some aspects of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, representing him as the Christ. He is still present even while I teach this message. So have you considered that he knows something you don't know? If you haven't, I think you should. Now, Master Far Muhammad specifically chose the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Louis Farrakhan as instruments to execute his will. This means that he placed his mind and spirit in each of them. And their divine labor is proof of this. Well, in the eyes of Master Far Muhammad, what is the quality of the seed or sperm of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Louis Farrakhan? Well, it's, it's of the highest quality. The highest quality. Master Far Muhammad therefore requires their seeds to spread throughout the earth. This is why he required them to enter polygamy. And we, inshallah, we intend to go further into this in the next message. The synagogue of Satan knows the science of mating, but continues to make little devils of humanity by influencing us particularly through its global mass media, to revel in mindless sexual 
escapades. For decades, social researchers have brought light to the negative effects of the pervasiveness of nudity and sexual explicit scenes in television and in the mass media in general. You can't watch a commercial today and not see a naked body, hardly. Every scene, whether it's a sitcom, a movie, a video, a music video, has sexual exploitation all in it and throughout. And that has affected the quality of the human beings being produced today. In the last message, we quoted from Bertrand Russell, Bertrand Russell. Again, he was a prominent scholar who influenced the aristocratic families that run the modern Western world. He served someone like a E. F. Hutton, if you would, when he talked these families listened. He states concerning the subject of human reproduction in his book, The Impact of Science on Society. Gradually by selective breeding, the congenital differences between rulers and ruled will increase until they become almost different species. Well, breeding again is sexual reproduction. Selective breeding, however, is a deliberate scientific process by which a specific male and female are chosen to mate with each other with the aim of producing selective traits, attributes, or characteristics. In other words, congenital differences in their offspring or congenital attributes in their offspring. Selective breeding has been used for centuries in animal and plant husbandry. Now actually this type of selective, selectiveness of finding the best mate is predominant in the natural world. Innate within female mammals is the propensity, the drive, to mate with the strongest of the males among their species. So our female lions, our female tigers, our female bears, more intelligent than women. That's a rhetorical question, but it can be easily answered. It seems so today. Our genetic makeup is also shaped by our experiences. Because we live in the world of the synagogue of Satan, because we live in the world of the synagogue of Satan, we are victims of their evil through their control of the systems that govern our lives from the cradle to the grave. And this, too, is affirmed in the Bible. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. In the previous message, we referred to a verse in Revelation, which called the synagogue of Satan, the throne of iniquity. Well, let us consider one of the avenues, the mass media again, through which the synagogue of Satan shapens us in its iniquity, making us into little devils. Consider these facts. Many television shows glamorize violence. Of course it does. They glamorize gangsters too. An average child in America will see 200,000 violent acts and 16,000 murders on TV by the age of 18. Two thirds of all television pro programming contains or contain violence. Television programs designed for children often contain more violence than adult programs. Continuous exposure to violence on television desensitizes children to the effects of human suffering 
or that or of the human suffering caused by violence. Violence on television leads to more aggressive behavior. So this these are realities that we know. But of course, we don't want to know some people. Well, many people are involved in producing TV programs. Television station owners, program producers, actors, advertisement companies, etc. Why then do most people help the synagogue of Satan destroy humanity? The Bible states, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through many sorrows. Well, the love of money is imposed on us by the families of the synagogue of Satan because they control the money. In a previous message, we quote it from this book. A quote. From, I believe, um, can't even get the man's name right now, but where the Rothschild was in charge, the Simon Wolf, excuse me, a direct quote from Simon Wolf, who was the president of B'nai Brif in the early 1900s. He quoted and even bragged of the Rothschild's control of the financial markets and of their leadership in the destiny of the European world. So these are who we're dealing with. And this is why some of those who participate in the mass media industry and wholeheartedly accept roles of violence and sexual exploitation, they do this for money and then go around and want to do something to help the environment or take on some other mission of saving frogs. You need to think again on who needs to be saved and start making wiser decisions. Now the Messiah, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, has not only taught in detail about the wickedness of the synagogue of Satan, but he has also instructed us on how to come from under their wicked influence. The Holy Quran explains why he has thus far been rejected. When they are told to follow the revelation that Allah has sent down, they say, nay, we shall follow the ways that we found our fathers following. What? Even if it is Satan beckoning them to the chastisement of the blazing fire. So our refusal to come from under the wicked influence of the synagogue of Satan will bring about the horrifying destruction of this world through the forces of nature, rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes. And also through the blindness of the world leaders. This destruction will come at the hands of the Christ the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. Thank you for viewing this message. May Allah continue to bless you and your families. Assalamu alaikum.